Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the crazy to happen in running this week. This week's stories include a beer mile world record DQ, Krar slays the Leadville 100, and a new course record at the Pikes Peak Marathon. Rob Krar, ladies and gentlemen. Listen up, folks. We had a historic Leadville 100 take place this weekend, and literally coming out of nowhere was Rob Krar. Not only taking his second Leadville 100 win, but also running a personal best on course and the second fastest all time, just nine minutes short of Matt Carpenter's infamous course record. So after riding the Leadville 100 mountain bike last weekend, Krar towed the line and crushed the field. He raced under pretty much ideal conditions. We haven't heard much from Rob the past few years after he was struggling with some injuries. However, if you look at the past few months, he quietly crushed some low key 50Ks and some really fast times. I'm talking 350 to 410. I for one am stoked for Rob and hope he continues his comeback streak. This certainly will be exciting times if he lines up for some other big races this fall or maybe into 2019. Could we see a Western States comeback and a shot at Walmsley's new course record? Let's not forget about the other 712 Leadville 100 runners who ran this year. There were a total of 367 finishers under the 30 hour cutoff, but interestingly, there are 379 listed as having finishes up until the 31 hour mark on Athlinks. So after Rob's 1551, we saw Ryan Kaiser come in second in 1737, with Seth Kelly in third in 1815. For the ladies, Katie Arnold took the win in 1953 with Addie Bracey second, 2117, and Gina Slaby a ways back in 2313. Finally, we have to recognize Dave Mackey. We've been following his journey all year to pursue a lead man finish, and we've got some exciting news. Not only did Dave complete Leadman, but he even earned a big sub 25 hour buckle finishing 24 hours, 54 minutes. With Leadville now over, we've got a Grand Slam update for you. There are still 18 eligible who will need to finish the Wasatch 100 next month to complete the Slam for 2018. Next, we head slightly south in Colorado for the Pikes Peak Marathon. This race was the next stop on the Golden Trail series tour and definitely bumped up the level of competition at the 63rd running of this historic race. Why is Pikes Peak so cool? Well, it tops out at over 14,000 feet high and features a stunning course starting and ending in Manitou Springs, Colorado. We saw some records fall this weekend on both the men's and women's sides as stout mountain runner Megan Kimmel sneaked in under the overall marathon course record in 4.15.04, which broke Lynn Borkland's 1981 record by 14 seconds. Also setting a record was your men's winner, Dakota Jones, who now has the fastest descent of all time. He won in 3.32.19, pulling off a sub 114 downhill after his 2.18 ascent time. Wow. More Coloradical news, Denver is landing the new VF Corp headquarters. With brands like the North Face, Smartwool, and Ultra, this is certainly exciting news for the state. VF Corp will be enjoying up to $27 million in tax incentives for making the move. Some more results from the weekend, we saw the Waldo 100K take place in Oregon. Rachel Drake was this year's women's champ in 11 hours, 42 minutes, and Duncan Hogue was your first male in 1015. According to Lord Balls on Twitter, the race saw 100 finish out of the 125 starters for the 17th annual. The very hot Habanero 100 took place in Texas and saw 16 hardy finishers, including just two sub 24 hour runners. And get this, they were both women. Megan Reed was first in 2114, with Dana Carr in second in 2238. And yes, both of them went under the previous overall course record. James Strayhorn took first for the men and third overall in 2510. The Trans Rockies run, which is a six day stage race near Leadville, was won by twin sisters Lina and Sana Elcott of Sweden. It took a total time of 17 hours, 48 minutes to run 120 miles over the course of the week. For the men, Sean Lywood and Mike Tucker were the victors quite a ways back of these fast ladies in 1925. One of these years, I'm gonna get out there and see what it's all about myself. Dan Lawson was attempting to set the record for the joggle, that's John O'Groats to Land's End across Britain. This over 870 mile journey travels from the northeastern to southeastern part of Great Britain. He was aiming to break the overall record of nine days, two hours, 26 minutes, but abandoned his record attempt somewhere at the end of day seven. It does appear he will be continuing on for a finish after a bit of a break. That brings us to a LazCon update. 
Barkley race director Gary Cantrell, as you may know, is nearing the completion of his transcontinental dream run. He's now over 100 marathons in. He crossed the 2,620 mile mark in 99 days, 5 hours, 21 minutes. Casey Neistat, who I'm certain will never take me up on my urging to give an ultra a try, just ran a 100 mile week. He set out to run four marathons in a single seven day stretch and was able to complete the task of just over 104 miles according to a video he posted last week on his YouTube channel. All right, that's like five and a half miles. I think that puts me at 105.1 or something for the week, which means victory is mine. I did it. Four marathons, seven days, 105 plus miles. All right. At this point, I'm pretty much done recommending ultras for this guy and just stoked to see him stoked. A little follow up on the quartz testing program, Alex Nichols posted ahead of UTMB that he is being summoned for a biological analysis, along with hashtag clean sport. The test includes the following. First, they administer a complete blood count or CBC, where they measure white blood cell count, red blood cell count, hemoglobin, hematocrit, MCV, which is mean course musculature volume, MCH or mean coarse musculature hemoglobin, MCHC, you get the idea, and platelets. The complete blood count is used to evaluate your overall health and detect disorders and infections. There's also a blood differential test that he'll be taking, including looking for the following, white blood cell count markers, neutrophil, lymphocyte, monocyte, eosinophil, and basophil mostly looking for health markers to detect immune system issues and ability to fight infections. Just to be clear, these are not specific doping tests to detect drug use, but rather general blood tests to determine your overall health. So no, we should not really be using hashtag clean sport when referring to these tests. PSA over. Corey Belmore was at it again, folks. Your reigning world beer mile champion participated in the international 2018 Beer Mile World Classic this past weekend. He smashed his previous record of four minutes, 33 seconds by running a 424, but was later DQ'd after it appears he had a combined 4.5 ounces in total left between the four beers. Ouch. REI posted a new article this week praising pacers as unsung heroes of the ultra marathon. I mean, really? I get it, pacers can be helpful, but let's just tone it down a little bit. They claim in the first paragraph, you can't run 100 miles without a crew or pacer. Ah, oh, geez, come on. Um, oh, geez. All right, it's actually a pretty fair article talking about what to look for in a crew, but yeah, pacing can actually be a fairly tough gig. And rant. Now for some FKT news, first to Colorado where Claire Gallagher ran the High Lonesome Loop, a 16 mile journey through the Indian Peaks wilderness. This area is due west of Nederland, which is west of Boulder, which is west of Nebraska, which is west of, okay, back to Claire. She finished in two hours, 35 minutes, and in her trip report, thinks she could cut about five minutes off her total time. She did mention she thinks the ladies could close the gap still on Ryan Smith's overall FKT, or fastest known time, of two hours, one minute. There's literally nothing written on this paper. Next, California, where we saw a new FKT on the Mountaineers route, car to car of four hours, 16 minutes from Patricia Franco. That's the story. And finally to Arizona, where Jim Walmsley, after a huge training block in Colorado, slayed Arizona's highest peak running one hour, 33 minutes, round trip to the top of Humphreys Peak and back to the Arizona Snow Bowl in the Kachina Peaks wilderness. Watch out, UTMB. The ladies are killing it this month with book launches. We saw not only Emily Forsberg launch her beautiful new book, Sky Runner, Finding Strength and Happiness and Balance in Your Running, but also Kara Goucher's Strong, A Runner's Guide to Boosting Confidence and Becoming the Best Version of You. You. Not to be left out, Shalene Flanagan released her second cookbook, Run Fast, Cook Fast, Eat Slow. And with that, thanks for tuning in to episode 107 of Outhouse News. Thanks for checking out the show this week, and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share or a question or feedback for the show, please leave a comment below. If you'd like to directly support the show financially, consider becoming a Patreon supporter of this channel. 
or pick up this goofy ass custom pair of Jam Jam sunglasses, but they're probably already sold out. Link below. And have a week.